Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Welcome to day number two of our Goblin Test Week. So, a week in which we create some first level fighters from each of the editions of Dungeons & Dragons before testing them against a never-ending stream of single goblins just to see which edition has the toughest fighter. Uh, so today, being day number two, we're going to make our first level fighter for second edition Advanced Dungeons & Dragons. So, um, the way that this works, uh, if you didn't watch the announcement video or if this is your first video that you're watching in the series, I'm going to be making uh, two characters for each edition, but I'm only going to be doing one on camera. Uh, the one that I do on camera is going to be made using the default character creation steps for that edition. And the second one's going to be more of an optimized one. So there's going to be definitely a wider range of uh, ability scores for these ones generated using the default methods. Um, so in this case, for second edition Advanced Dungeons Dragons, it is the default method. Method number one is the 3D6 down the line to create your characters. Uh, now the one caveat that I am allowing is where the minimum strength score for a fighter character is going to be a 9. Any ability scores that I roll that are less than 9, I'm going to disregard and re-roll. Now this does give sort of an unfair advantage because it can generate a much higher number, but I still think that it's something that's relatively uh, relatively fair to do, and I don't think it's something that's going to create an overpowered character. Uh, for example, when I did that with the first edition AD&D fighter that I made, uh, I ended up getting a 15 for strength, which only gave, which gave no bonuses whatsoever. And I believe it would be the same actually for a strength of 9 as well. So, mathematically speaking, the two numbers weren't really any different from one another in terms of what this test is going to do. So, let's just jump right into it. So, we're making our first level human fighter. <coughs> uh, so, let's start off with, let me just zoom in a bit here. Alright, so I just got a spot laid out for the ability scores. So this is the second edition AD&D arranged the stats in a method similar to what we're all used to now. So where first edition had strength, intelligence, wisdom, dexterity, constitution, and charisma, this has your physical attributes and then your mental attributes. But we're doing our 3d6 down the line, so we got our three six-sided dice here. Uh, again, any result of a 9 or higher for strength I'm going to keep because that is the minimum. And the rest are just going to be the straight rolls, whatever they end up being. So, nope. Alright, uh, sorry about that. The, the camera died just as I was starting to roll the stats here. Uh, so, um, I did end up getting a 16 for strength. Uh, this is like the second time I've tried rolling sets of stats. Uh, the first one ended up being so bad, uh, like the highest stat that I had was, uh, it was I think 12 for dexterity, strength was 9, and nothing else was above uh, an 8 uh, for the rest of the stats. So hopefully we'll get something a little bit better here, something a little bit more like playable and survivable. Now the first set of stats really did encapsulate what um, first edition AD&D &D can really all be about, but I still want something that's not really, really crippled by terrible stats. So. We'll see what we got here. So I did get the 16 strength, which is good. Dexterity of, oh, uh, we got a 15 dexterity. So that's also good. Uh, wow, okay, we're doing pretty good here now. So 16 constitution. Uh, that's a little bit more like it. So we got a 10 intelligence. Uh, 13 wisdom, actually it's pretty good stats here all in all. And we got a 13 Charisma, so this is actually pretty decent. Now I could have tried doing a go of it with like the 9 strength and everything else, like 8 or below, but I think this will be fine. So let's just go ahead and we got our character sheet here. Alright, so let's just fill in some information. So we're just going to stick with uh, good old uh, Ethan for our name. Our alignment's going to be lawful good. Race is human. Class is fighter. Level one. Oh. All right. Uh, we're not going to worry about the homeland and all. There's a lot of really cool information here. I'm just doing this for sort of a test. So we are going to go with sex male. Height uh, was five foot. I want to say I think it was five foot uh, ten inches. Uh, age is, we're going to make them 19, hair, brown, eyes, green, so weight, I think we had them around 165, 
So we'll stick with that. Uh, I'm not too worried about all the other stuff here. So let's just move down into, so this is kind of, whoop. all right, so we got our charts here for our ability scores. So let's just fill in our numbers first. So we had 16 dexterity, 15, 16, 10, 13, and 13. So this is actually a really good um, set of stats for uh, the character. I kind of feel bad for not using the first set that I rolled, but again, you know, everything was just so awful that, um, you know, I just, I don't think it would have worked. Uh, so let's just actually look at the stats and see what we would have had. Just out of curiosity. So constitution was only, I think, uh, would have been zero hit points, but still, uh, still it's just not, just not going to happen. So let's, uh, let's just start with our strength here. So we have a 16 strength. There we go. So 16 strength gives us a normal hit probability, but plus one to damage. Uh, our weight allowance is 70. Max press is 195. Open doors is on a nine. And bend bars lift gates at uh, 10%. So let's just fill those numbers in. So hit probability is plus zero. Damage adjustment plus one. Weight allowed is 70 pounds, maximum press, 195, uh, open doors on a 9, and bend bars, lift gates, 10%. So up next, our dexterity. So our dexterity is 15, which gives us zeros pretty much all across the board. Uh, defense adjustment of minus one. So this is actually going to lower our armor class um, by one. So defense adjustment applies to the saving throws against attacks that can be dodged, as it says here. So for example, things like lightning bolts, fireballs, boulders, example. Uh, it also represents the... It also modifies the armor class, representing the character's ability to dodge normal missiles and parry weapon thrusts. So I'm going to get a minus one to my armor class. So defense adjustment of minus one, everything else was zero. Then we got a constitution of 16, which gives us plus two hit points. Oop. Plus two hit points, uh, system shock is 95, and resurrection survival is 96. Uh, poison save is zero, and there's no regeneration. So, nil, zero, resurrection survival is 90. So what those numbers represent, and I don't think I really mentioned it when I was doing the first session 18D1. Uh, so system shock, um, we'll just kind of go through here quickly. So it states the percentage chance that a character has to survive magical effects that reshape or age his body. Petrification, reversing of petrification, polymorph, magical aging, etc. It can also be used to see if the character retains consciousness in particularly difficult situations. So, if an evil wizard polymorphs, blah, blah, blah. So, it's just essentially if something really messed up happens to your body, it's a chance to, you know, survive it or to remain conscious. Uh, it didn't really come into play a whole lot. And resurrection survival is the same thing. So, resurrection can be sort of a harrowing experience. And there was a chance that you could actually not be resurrected. There's a chance that you could actually die once again from just the trauma of being resurrected. So that's basically what that is. Again, you know, most for the most part, it never really came into play, but just sort of an explanation of what that stuff does. Now for intelligence, you have an intelligence of 10, which gives us uh, two languages. And we're not worried about anything else because we are not playing a spellcaster. So, number of languages, two. I'm not going to really worry about the languages here either, just because, again, uh, the purpose of this character is just to uh, battle some goblins. And we got 13, 13 wisdom, which is just zero magical defense adjustment, and... Again, we're not going to worry about the bonus spells or anything like that, because that is for clerics. So, zero, N-A, N-A, and we are not immune to any spells. And then lastly, we have our 13 Charisma. So we can have five henchmen, 
uh, zero loyalty base, so the just normal loyalty base, and reaction adjustment of plus one. So what do we say there? Five henchmen, zero, plus one. All right. Uh, now again, movement. Um, what is the movement for humans? Uh, I can something I might end up looking up later, or just kind of cutting, just because we're looking at. I'll find I'll find the movement uh, a little bit later on, so I'll probably end up cutting to that. But again, the movement is not something I'm really going to be worried about, only because um, we're going to be in toe-to-toe -to -toe combat, basically. So movement issues really isn't going to be uh, something that's going to come into play, because they're going to be two characters just slugging it out in melee combat uh, to the death. So movement's on page 157. Alright, but let's just fill that in just because. So the movement rate for a human is 12. Now that may be modified by my armor and stuff, but let's just put uh, 12 in there for now. Alright, and let's find our saving throws. So there was a bunch of charts in the back of the book. Oops. Turning undead, calculated Thaco, which will get into. I'm pretty sure that the saving throw charts were in here, but then again, maybe not. Alright, let's just find out. We'll zoom out here. I just want to fill these numbers in just to kind of get them out of the way. Combat. I want to say it was in the saving throw. So, page 133. There we go. So on page 134 we got our charts here. So, as I explained in the first session ADD one, uh, saving throws, you had your progression based off your class and your level, and you get target numbers. So, for example, if you were hit with paralyzation effect, poison, or death magic, a fighter of first level would have to roll a 14 or greater on a 20-sided die in order to overcome it. So let's just fill in those numbers right now. We'll zoom back in a bit. Alright, so saving throws, paralyze and poison was uh, 14, rod staff or wand is 16, I think the numbers are the same actually, and then we got uh, petrification polymorph is 15, breath weapon and spells are both 17, so that's pretty much the same from the first edition AD&D AD days. <clears throat> So the only thing really left to do to fill out will be our armor class and our items, so or our weapon. So for the armor, again, the idea or the hope was that I'd be able to uh, get chainmail, a shield, and a longsword. But I am going to roll uh, randomly to see how much uh, gold I start with. <clears throat> so, so we got our stuff here. So for a warrior, it is 5d4 times 10, so it's the same as what we had before. So we got our d4 here. I'm going to get it to focus. There we go. Alright, not off to a good start. So that is 1, 2, well, okay, let's just start over because that was bad. Uh, all right. Uh, you know what? No, nope. so that was three. Uh, so that is uh, 70. Hmm. All right, yeah, let's just start that over. I think there was an average that you can take. All right, so two, six, 10, whoops, 12, and that ended up being a one. So 13, so 130 gold. I think I could have done with the uh, 
with the 80 gold as well, some of this stuff, but 130 gold it will get us through what we need to pick up here. Alright, proficiencies, I want to say... Boy, just flipping through these books kind of takes me back here. So we got our money and equipment. So let's start with our armors. So chainmail is 75 gold. So let's get chainmail. And the shield. Alright, uh, so we got the body shields or the buckler. So we're going to go with the body shield, which is 10 gold. So that gives us 85 gold that we've spent so far. And our long sword, which we're going to pick up next, I think that's still 15. So that is 15 gold, so that is 100 gold pieces total. Which leaves us with 30 gold left over. Alright, now just fill in our charts. So let's just start here. So the armor class. There's the cost. I think we have the AC charts here somewhere. I'm pretty sure that still gives us the armor class. Here we go, so armor class ratings. I'm pretty sure we're still at armor class 4. Uh, chain mail and shield, um, or splint mail, banded mail, bronze, plate mail. So yeah, so we are at armor class 4. Uh, so that is the same. Armor type, chain mail, and body shield. So let's just read the description for the shields here and so the body shield whoop, oh, we're zoomed in quite a bit there I forgot about that so the body shield is a massive massive shield reaching from the chin to toe it must be firmly fastened to the forearm and the shield hand must grip it at all times it provides a great deal of protection improving the armor class of the character by one against melee attacks and by two against missile attacks for attacks from the front or flank side or front flank sides um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to use. Again, we're just looking at the uh, the main thing here. Um, so, uh, we're not looking at surprise or even attack from the rear, so I'm not going to worry about filling in uh, any of that information, just because it's not something that we're going to worry about too much here. And the last thing we're going to be filling in is just our longsword information. Uh, which is the same as it was before, so uh, longsword. Now the one thing that uh, is going to change, I believe, is our rate of attacks because as a first level fighter we are given a certain number of weapon proficiencies and we would be... <coughs> um, so what you can do with the proficiencies is you have to spend a proficiency slot, a weapon proficiency slot, to become proficient with a weapon, which just kind of makes sense. Uh, so that is a system that I do want to actually use. And as a fighter, you can actually specialize at first level with a weapon. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to have um, a specialist fighter. So he's going to specialize with his longsword, meaning that he's going to get three attacks every two rounds. So the first round of combat, he would only get one attack, but on the second round of combat, he gets his attack, and then at the end of the round, he gets his second attack. So let's uh, do that right now. So a number of attacks... It's going to be three every two. Now that is an optional uh, system. I have thought about not using it for the standard character, but I've decided that overall I've never played a second edition AD&D game that didn't use the proficiencies. So we're using that and we're going to have a specialized character. So attack adjustments and damage adjustments. So we get plus one damage adjustment. So plus is, whoop, dang it. Plus zero slash plus one. So Thacko. So I'm going to calculate this as per the individual uh, weapon. So uh, the way that Thacko works is it stands for to hit armor class zero, and that's something else that I don't think I really had mentioned 
in the uh, the previous video. I did mention that armor classes start at 10 and they go down. So uh, with the that goes, what we have here is we've got a all the first level characters, whether you're a priest, rogue, warrior, or wizard, start at 20, and then they go down based on your level. So fighters, their Thacko reduces by one for every single level. Uh, but we are starting at first level here. And we don't have a hit probability adjustment. So our weapon Thacko is going to be uh, 20. So magical weapons affect it, hit probability affects it. We just don't have that here. We do get plus one for our damage, so our damage against small medium creatures is 1d8 plus one, and against a large creature is 1d12 plus one. Uh, range I'm just going to put in melee. And one thing, another thing that I am going to be doing here is um, when it comes to initiative, uh, I'm going to be using the optional system of a d10 modified by things like spell casting adjustments or casting times or weapon speed factors. So our long sword. Whoop. So as we can see here, our weapon long sword has a weight of. So the first number is the weight. So it has a weight of four pounds. So let's just put that four pounds. It is a size medium weapon. Type is slashing damage. And so what we have here, so the last thing that we have here is our speed factor. So our longsword has a speed factor of five. Uh, just for comparison, a great sword or two-handed sword is a much heavier, much clumsier weapon to wield in melee. So it does a d10 for its speed factor. So what you do is you roll a 10-sided die using the initial system that I'm going to go with. Uh, and then you add your speed factor to the uh, to the uh, whatever you roll. Uh, in this version, the lower initiatives go first, so this will make it a little bit harder to go first. But that's what we're going to do. So we have a speed factor of five. All right. Um, so there we have pretty much all the information. The last thing we need to do is our hit points. So uh, we're adding. Uh, what do we have? Do we have an adjustment? So we're adding plus two hit points for our 16 constitution and we're rolling a d10. So it's a d10 plus two and again in second edition AD&D you did roll hit points even at first level. So uh, we got, whoops, we got a seven on the dice plus two so we're gonna have nine hit points to start. And that's basically it. So there's nothing else that I really need to worry about as far as this version of the character goes. Now there's other stuff that I would fill in, like I'd fill in my proficiencies and languages and all that uh, if I was doing this as a player character. And there's a second sheet here for sort of the other uh, things. Let's just actually put under our coins, we do have 30 gold pieces left over, so let's fill that in. But uh, there you go. So that is our second edition AD&D fighter. I uh, think he's a little bit beefier than our first edition AD&D fighter. I actually got some really good rolls there. Um, I may, just to see how it goes, I may make a fighter using that very first set just to see how bad it might be. Uh, I haven't decided on that yet, uh, but this is the one that we're going to be going with. And then our next character, the second one I'm going to do off camera is going to be optimized. So he is going to have an 18 strength. The one thing I forgot to do or talk about is how Advanced Dungeons and Dragons has what's called exceptional strength for fighter type, like warrior classes. So just looking at the chart here, you have 18 strength and then you have your exceptional strengths for warriors. <laughs> Now, uh, just because I'm building the character off camera, um, <coughs> I didn't actually get a chance to uh, do the like to show the rolling for the exceptional strength. So, just to get our first edition character here that I had made using the optimized set of stats, being 18 strength, 16 constitution, 12 dex, and then eights for everything else. Uh, I did still roll the exceptional strength randomly, so I ended up getting an exceptional strength roll of 80. So again, I'm not actually going to be making the exceptional strength character on camera for second edition, but I thought I would still roll it randomly to see what it is that we get. So we got our percentage here. 
So the one that we're going to be making, so our exceptional strength fighter, is going to be an 18 slash 63. So just to show you what that means, we consult the chart here. So we have 18 slash from 0, 1 to 50. Uh, we are in the range of 18 slash 51 to 75. So what that's going to mean for us is we are getting a plus two. He's going to get a plus two bonus on his hit probability. So, for example, his weapon thaco for the optimized character would be an 18 at first level. Uh, it's also going to get plus three uh, for the damage adjustment instead of the plus one that we currently have with our standard character. And then we've got a uh, weight allowance of 160, uh, maximum press of 305 pounds, open doors on a 13 and 25% chance to bend bars and lift gates. We're not too worried about that stuff because it's not going to come into play, but that's what we're going to have for our exceptional strength. And there you go. So that is our second edition AD&D character. AD&D first level fighter made for our goblin test. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you tomorrow when we make our third edition first level fighter. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you then.